Hello and welcome to this video on non-normal data and structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to structural equation modeling, multi-level modeling or latent class analysis and often involving the M plus software. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. In this video, I want to talk conceptually about data non-normality in structural equation modeling and factor analysis. Why is this relevant and what can you do about it when you have non-normal data? Should you do something? What should you do? What can you do? What consequences does it have? So let's talk first about why non-normal data can potentially be problematic when you run a structural equation model or a factor model, like for example, this one here. So the issue with non-normal data, non-normally non distributed variables is that many programs for structural equation modeling, such as M plus or Lavan or Amos by default use estimation methods that are based on normal theory, normal distribution theory, or more specifically the idea of multivariate normal data. And so that is what we typically use as the default estimation method for structural equation models and confirmatory factor models is maximum likelihood estimation. And maximum likelihood estimation is based on normal distribution theory. Now, what happens if you have variables that are not multivariate normal, which probably is the norm rather than the exception, at least in the social sciences, for example, in psychology, that would be my field. We typically have a lot of um, variables that are clearly non-normally distributed and they're already univariate non-normal and then definitely multivariate non-normal. And so why, what consequences would this have when you apply maximum likelihood estimation to non-normal data? The issue here is not so much that the parameter estimates would be um, biased, like for example, let's say the path coefficients, the beta coefficients here in the structural model of this latent path analysis, the coefficients as such are usually pretty accurate, even or the estimates of these path coefficients would be um, fairly accurate even with non-normal data. But the problem is that the estimated standard errors for these um, path coefficients, they are affected by non-normality. Non and so this means then when you run tests of statistical significance, for example, if you wanted to find out whether there's a significant linear relationship between spatial ability and reasoning here, testing this beta three coefficient for statistical significance, then if the standard error for beta three is biased, then um, your significance test would be biased because the significance test that we're typically using here is a Z test where we divide the estimate of beta three by its estimated standard error to obtain a Z score. And then we compare the um, empirical Z score to a critical Z score from the Z score distribution or standard normal distribution to find a P value and that p-value then might be incorrect if the standard error is incorrect. And so that is one issue with non-normality is that the standard errors of the parameter estimates can be biased and that can compromise your tests of statistical significance. It can also then compromise your confidence intervals that are also based on those standard errors. And so that is one of the key issues with non-normality and structural equation modeling is that under maximum likelihood estimation, then the standard errors of the parameter estimates may be incorrect. And as a consequence, the statistical inference, statistical tests of significance, confidence intervals, could then also be biased, could be um, inaccurate. Furthermore, when we run structural equation models like this one or confirmatory factor models, we also typically conduct a test of model fit, namely a chi-square test of model fit that is also um, obtained under maximum likelihood 
estimation and this chi-square test of model fit likewise can be affected by data non-normality in particular its p-value so you might obtain a test of model fit that is inaccurate and so then you might um, for example incorrectly reject a proper model or you might um, fail to reject a wrong model and so that is then also problematic so in summary um, the problem with data non-normality is not so much in the estimated parameter estimates which are fairly robust to violations of normality but the standard errors and test statistics are not robust to non-normality not so much so they can be affected and so now what can we do to not run into this problem so one issue one thing that we could do is we could say we're going away from maximum likelihood we're going away from normal theory estimators we're using estimation methods that don't require normal theory such as for example weighted least squares or wls estimation so that is a distribution free estimation method and that would be very elegant so to say to get around this issue by just simply not using maximum likelihood estimation now unfortunately um, this works well only with very large sample sizes so if you have many thousand cases then um, this is a viable alternative to maximum likelihood estimation to use WLS as an estimator that is also available in most programs for structural equation modeling, but it's not an option for conventional sample sizes in fields like mine, um, again, psychology, where our sample sizes are usually only, let's say, 200, 300, 400, maybe sometimes 600. We rarely have sample sizes that are several thousand cases. And so we typically have to rely on maximum likelihood estimation because WLS would not be appropriate for smaller sample sizes. So then what can we do? Now, um, if we have to stick to maximum likelihood estimation with non-normal data, another option to, to uh, since we saw that primarily the problem with maximum likelihood estimation is in the standard errors and chi-square test statistics of model fit. What we can do is we can use a robust version of the maximum likelihood estimation method, for example, the satora bendler correction or other robust estimation methods that make adjustments to the standard errors and chi-square test statistic. And so that is actually the option that is probably the easiest way to deal with this and the most um, effective and efficient way to deal with non-normality. And that's what uh, many programs for structural equation modeling now offer. In M+, for example, you have an MLM estimator, an MLR estimator, an MLMV estimator, so all kinds of robust maximum likelihood estimation methods. And I have a separate video here on this channel on robust maximum likelihood estimation methods in M+, that I'm linking in the description. So don't forget to check the description for additional videos and resources so that would be one option another option is to use bootstrapping there's a bollenstein bootstrap method available in programs like m plus or and or amos and so on that can also be used to have robust to obtain robust standard errors and corrected test statistics that would be also a way to deal with this issue now what else could you do with um, non-normal data you could also um, transform the data so you could try to um, normalize the data however that can be tricky and it can affect the interpretation of the results and it might be tedious to do this with many variables and you may still not achieve multivariate normality so probably your best bet is to use robust maximum likelihood estimation in many cases and that has been shown to be um, pretty reliable in terms of providing you with correct test statistics and correct um, statistical inference so that when you test, for example, a structural model like this, that your significance tests for these path coefficients will be accurate, will be um, reliable, and you won't run into type 1 error inflation, for example, or other issues with your significance tests. 
I hope you found this video useful to learn a little bit about the issue of non-normal data in structural equation modeling. You can see it's actually not that big of a deal. Many people that I um, talk to in my work as a statistical consultant are anxious about this and feel like they have to throw their model away or their data away and can't model it with non-normal data. And I hope you saw through this video that it's actually not true. It's actually not that big of an issue. You can address non-normal data very well by using robust estimation methods. And then usually um, you have no problem with that. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button and check out the description for additional resources. And I'll see you next week.